It's called the Knowledge Transfer Scheme, bringing research to practice to minimize injuries in the Canadian Armed Forces. Big picture, the Canadian Army has a PT culture of favoring prolonged LBM, so uh, load-bearing marches, and unit running, which have both been associated with an increased risk of MSKI, which is musculoskeletal injuries, in infanteers. So, James, this is your article, the mm -hmm. Army's running program uh, problem that we, we went over last time. So, uh, you seem like the perfect person to, to chat about the, I guess, the, the influence that you've had in this space and now seeing this actually sussed out in research. Uh, what are your thoughts? Like how easy it is to convince a late teenage kid. It's like, I want you to get big and strong. That's your yeah. job for the next couple of weeks. You know why, you know why the troops don't like doing the runs and whatever? Cause they know it doesn't work and they know it's a waste of their time. They know. They're smarter than their CEOs think. All right, James, you're back on the podcast, man. Welcome back. We're going to be chatting about uh, things that you were talking about a few years ago. And now, now it's like, hey, why don't we get troops stronger? Based on this study, man. I, so I, I'm, I'm I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, dude, I gotta get you back on. We gotta have a chat. Um, so how you doing, man? Um, give us up some updates as to uh, last time we chatted. I think uh, you were still in the forces last time we chatted. Yeah, so I'm out now. Um, I've got a uh, visa, um, app, work visa application to go in uh, down south in, in Oklahoma City uh, to eventually slot into a uh, head coach position at uh, Starting Strength Oklahoma City. Yes. Um, that's working its way through the system as a backup plan right now. I'm just doing a, um, a welding techniques program at Georgian college in the event that that doesn't go through. And I'll be uh, probably sliding myself out East onto the East coast, uh, using the helmets to hard hats program to get into the uh, boilermakers union out there. Oh, wow. Okay. So a lot of pokers in the fire. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like, uh, you want to have a couple of COAs, right? I think the, that that's two koas, and I heard the magic number was three. So I need to I need to develop a throwaway koa. So Uber actually, Uber or stripping? It's like it's a toss. -up, actually, yeah, right? that's like, that's the throwaway koa right there. It'll be the stripping <laughs> part. Uh, in, I, I, in, in the OC is like, all right, I like I like koa three. You're doing koa three. It's like you weren't supposed uh, to pick that one, sir. It's like yeah, well, that's the one it's that requires feasible. the least the least amount of cognitive effort and you make crazy tips. It's like, uh, all right. Okay. Um, well, uh, stripping aside. Yes. Um, let's, um, let's get into it. We were texting because uh, I went to the, uh, Simver conference. Uh, what does it stand for? The Canadian Institute for military veteran health. Yeah. And research. There we go. So, <laughs> Uh, that conference is held every year and it was in Ottawa. I've been before. It's, it's interesting to see where the research is heading and that's why I go. And there's very, very little on like strength and performance. Uh, it's all, <laughs> it's all ideologically motivated. Let's put it that way. The research there. So when there is a cool presentation that was all about getting troops strong and injury, like, and less injury prone, I was like, I got to go see this. So I'm just going to pull it up here on the screen. I, I, James, I don't know. Have you, have you had a chance to um, to check it out in the um, uh, No, I have not had a chance Journal? to check it out, no. That's okay. We're going to go over it anyway. So I'm just going to uh, share my screen here to show the viewers that will be on YouTube. So it's called The Knowledge Transfer Scheme, Bringing Research to Practice to Minimize Injuries in the Canadian Armed Forces. Now, if I was going to pick a title, I would not have picked that because I'd wouldn't know what this is all about until I see the subheading. But anyways, I'm just splitting hairs here. Um, so big picture, the Canadian Army has a PT culture of favoring prolonged LBM, so uh, load bearing marches and unit running, which have mm -hmm. both been associated with an increased risk of MSKI, which is musculoskeletal injuries in infanteers. Full stop. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, James, um, you wrote something. A few years back and our first conversation 
centered around strength and conditioning and the army's running problem, which I will, uh, I'll pull up here as well. So folks, if you're not listening on, uh, YouTube, uh, why not? <laughs> it's my first question, but, uh, the, uh, those of you that are listening on audio, if you head over to the YouTube page, you'll see, um, the articles that I'm pulling up here. So just give me a second. I'll just fiddle fucking with my, my screen here. So James, this is your article, the mm -hmm. army's running program, uh, problem that we, we went over last time. So, uh, you seem like the perfect person to, to chat about the, I guess the, the influence that you've had in this space and now seeing this actually sussed out in research. Uh, what are your thoughts? Like, what are you, what are you thinking right now? Well, I'm, I'm glad that the, uh, the, like the educated people are finally catching up to this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit sad that it's, it's, it's kind of like taken a research paper to be written about this for the idea to be accepted mm. that there's this kind of like that there's this, like, I'm not going to believe this until I see it in a peer reviewed article. You know, it's like <laughs> that, that's silly. You know, it's why is there, why is there this gatekeeping thing? It's um, at least in the military. Well, back when I wasn't there, um, we should not be necessarily waiting on, um, you know, a, a research paper to tell us how to put our pants on. You know, this mm -hmm. is this mm -hmm. is not complicated stuff. Um, it's it's difficult to apply, but it's not complicated. We we don't need a researcher to tell us basic simple things. Um, and it's like. Actually, when I was like trying to take that information and like literally like shove it up the chain of command to like get some attention to it, because I was at the combat training center, it's like, hey, it's like, I I went and I looked at all the tasks for all our DP one uh, army courses for you know NCMs, and absolutely none of them require uh, running a long distance, and we're picking up all these injuries and stuff with running a long distance. So it's like, my question is why. What's the rationale for making the troops run long distances? Yeah, I'm you just know? pulling it up here. Inf infantry DP1 infantry total task <clears throat> 217 running long distance slowly zero manipulate heavy objects 110. <laughs> yeah, because it's all like digging and like you know picking up the heavy thing and like putting it over there and you know if you're running you're you're running very fast for a short period of time. So mm -hmm. the the um I think this is like trying to run off the top man the oxygen energy system that you use in a long run that's being trained during that long run it, it doesn't matter as much the oxidative the oxidative metabolic pathway like you need that's like like yeah you need glycolytic and, and creatine phosphate uh yeah. to power you through pretty much everything the only thing i'll push back on is <clears throat> when i was patrolling back in the day <laughs> uh we'd have some pretty long patrols but we weren't running right we were just walking no, it's uh, under yeah, load. Yeah. So you had a bunch of stuff on, right? So it's like, like we were, but there was a lot of strength, man. I had to pull myself over yeah. walls. I had to like, climb. My legs were burning. So like the endurance had to be there, but I don't think my 10 K run time helped. I'll be no, honest. It's um. so what, what helps you on during those times is being stronger than day old piss. And uh, <laughs> you just kind of like walk around and you're, you know, you're, you're fine after that. Right. Mm -hmm. So I it's like, like you just, you, so, cause it's like, if you're wearing a hundred pounds of stuff, but if you can squat 400 pounds, well, that's one quarter of what you can, your max squat is. Right. But mm -hmm. if you're wearing that, that same troop, you get another one. He's like, he can squat a hundred pounds is much weaker than the 400 pound squatter. So that 100 pounds is much heavier to him than the stronger troop. So therefore make the troop stronger. So he's less affected by the hundred pounds of gear because the hundred pounds of gear is mission specific. Mm -hmm. you know? It's, it's not changing. It's not going away. If anything, like we're, we just keep on like accumulating more and more and more stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's, it's going to keep getting worse. Yeah. There's an article that I commented on a, a few years back about the, um, the gradual increase in like combat load since the boar war. <laughs> I think it went even went further back than that. I think it went back to like von Clausewitz when he was measuring his troops 
and the rate of like marching pace they could do and mm -hmm. like <clears throat> how much uh, how much slower they would get for every like five or ten pounds added yep and we've gotten <clears throat> to like the silly point because human beings like our frame can only like we're not getting any bigger or you know like our our, our, our biology is our biology so we kind of hit an upper limit i think in afghanistan and the comparison was kind of it was kind of obvious like well the taliban weren't wearing 100 pounds of gear they were able to run around like crazy right now we don't want to run around the taliban but the thing was like our operational effectiveness likely was heavily hindered because of the fact that we're carrying 100 pounds like we just can't yeah. move well, so you can be strong like cool stuff like yeah. body armor and you know like right a lot of ammunition and batteries right. so can, like, talk to each other and stuff and also it's like with the um afghanistan thing we're, we're much more casualty adverse than the taliban because mm -hmm. yeah. like you know, just now well, i'm not getting into that but um it's like <laughs> a lot of that a lot of the extra weight is body armor and i'm going to come back at you and i'm going to argue that we actually can in fact change the biology of the troops to make them strong enough to carry all this stuff by doing a strength training program mm -hmm. during training yeah because yeah. like it is possible to take a take a guy and get him a lot stronger. Mm. Take I guess I probably should have said an, I probably should have said anatomy then, because yeah, you're right. The biology of the of the individual would change if you know more muscle mass, stronger, better yeah. better engine. Yeah. Well, it's it's sense. like when I when I joined the army, I weighed one forty. Now Whoa. I weigh two forty five. <laughs> you were one forty. I was one forty. <laughs> yep. Little, little oh, guy. Man. <laughs> I was also five six, so I was like five six one forties. That's not too bad. I, I could run and yeah. do push ups and stuff. Yeah, but I'm yeah I'm like thirteen. I guess almost fourteen years older now. I'm also a hundred pounds heavier. But I'm yeah, like much stronger. I I just can't run as fast anymore. That's fine. I don't yeah. need to. <laughs> right. Um. One of the um. The, the big picture from this uh, from mm -hmm. this study. Yep. When, when the researchers are going over, I'm like, oh my God, this is literally what James talked about. It's yep. like they listen to our podcast and then say, hey, we're going to do a study based off of this. Um, so they did a nine week program mm -hmm. and they, it was supervised, obviously. And what they did was they really brought down the amount of runs and load bearing mm -hmm. marches and mm -hmm. increased the amount of um, strength workouts. So they were doing um, uh, cardio two to a max of three times a week mm -hmm. strength two to three times a week and one load bearing march um every week and the way they broke it down which is what you know any anybody that's a coach if you're actually coaching people you don't put all the people together and lump them in the same category if you want to get them like fit everybody's going to have a weakness so like putting everybody together in a platoon and going for a run they like they obviously recognize like this is a dumb idea because the guys that are really good runners they're not getting any benefit the people mm -hmm. are terrible runners are getting broken and the guys in the middle are just kind of like coasting right um so it's so not they good broke, for anyone it's not good for anybody so they broke it up into ability groups mm -hmm. and they did more interval running so rather than do you know 10k which is kind of useless because you don't ever use it yeah. um they broke they did some more intervals awesome mm -hmm. strength was priority lower body and focus was on good movement mechanics so good lifting right um and the ruck was progressive so what they did was uh you know typically i don't know if you, you ever experienced this but uh, i would experience it all the time the progressiveness was you, they'd increase load and distance where in this case it's, it's done properly they keep the load the same it's 27.5 kilos but they just gradually increase the distance. So mm -hmm. your your load isn't getting any heavier, but your distance is getting a little bit longer. So you're only changing one variable. I was like, yeah, that's just common sense stuff, but nobody was ever doing it. So um, based on that model, like if you were to train a troop, is that kind of how you would, if, especially from the, this, this is for the infantry, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, is that how, like, if you're conceptualizing it, you think that would make sense? Is that in line with what you were talking about in the um, in your article with the army's running problem? Um, so that's that's one way to do it. It's it's not necessarily the way that I would tackle it. Mm -hmm. uh, so the um, the issue is is that so when you're designing a training program, I think we both can agree that what you're doing is you are uh, designing a specific stress mm -hmm. to apply to a person in order to induce a physical adaptation. Mm -hmm. Is that a, um, is that a definition we can both agree on? Yes. 
Okay. Uh, the second part of that is the a better training program is one that produces results faster. Mm -hmm. And that the interval between the apply the stress and the improvement of performance is shorter. We're both on the same page there. Yep. So what we would want to do is ideally um, select the adaptation that we want and also apply the stress in such a manner that the adaptations are displayed at the fastest possible interval. Sound good? So yep. we have that definition as the optimum training program. We, we both in agreement there? Yes. Okay, cool. So what do we want the infantry to be able to do at the end? What, what do we want? We want someone strong and f with a good gas tank. Is that mm -hmm. fair? Mm -hmm. And if you have, you have an infantry who is strong, has a good gas tank at the end of that, he's going to be able to handle the stuff that you throw at him. Like the ruck march is just going to be something that he does. It's not going to be an intimidating thing. Yeah. One thing I'd argue is that if you are strong and if you have a good gas tank, you don't need to train a ruck march because it's just walking. You need to, you need to toughen up your feet a bit, but if you're on course on an infantry course, you're doing quite a bit of walking, right? You're on your feet all day. Yeah. Okay. So your feet are already toughened up. So we can literally drop the entire ruck marching program. We just, let's just take it gone. So that way we, we freed up a time slot for something else. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And also if we, a problem with what they had designed is that a getting very strong and getting a very good gas tank, those are kind of two competing adaptations, right? Mm -hmm. So they're, they're not necessarily, it's, it's, it's like a chariot and the horses are pulling in different directions. So what I would do is you have nine weeks. Let, let's, let's just say there, there's, pretend there's no field X. Okay, just gonna magic yeah, that just, away. We're just, just gonna perfect conditions. Yeah. Sprinkle some pixie <laughs> dust in, you know, just, you know we're, we're gonna ignore it. But what I would do is say, well, I would um, just ignore cardio for about six or seven weeks mm -hmm. and eke out as many strength performance increases as possible during that six week period. Because that is, according to our previous definition, the most efficient way. Right. Strong, especially if you're not having a competing adaptation, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You, you want to make sure that you're going in one direction. So it's like, yeah, you got this kid. It's like your job is to go. You're starting out at a 175 deadlift on Monday, and you're gonna come back, and you're gonna deadlift 185 on Wednesday. Then you're gonna deadlift 195 on Friday. You're gonna take the weekend off, recover, and just keep making 10 pound jumps three times a week for as long as possible. And also you're yep. going to eat everything. And on the, um, on the days off and on the Tuesdays and Thursdays, you're not doing any PT. You're getting an extra hour of sleep, kid. Congratulations. All right. Yeah. So that's it. This, this teenage kid is going to, his job is to go and like pick up the heavier thing every time and then get thrown out of the mess for eating too much food. That's his job. That's all I want him doing. Yeah. And then yep. by the, t so, by that time, this kid, potentially, if he stomps on the gas hard enough, he's put 100 pounds on his deadlift or his squat or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to ignore, you know, everything that's not like a deadlift, a squat, or a bench press, or an overhead press. We're just going to ignore it because it's we want the big, heavy lifts. We want to move as much weight as possible, as frequently as possible, with yeah. the most aggressive jumps and weight that he can tolerate. Right. And especially and like I want him, I want, I want to tell this kids like, I want you gaining weight. I want you gaining right. two pounds a week. Yeah. Which you can when you're 18, right? You, you, you can do it when you're 18. It's like, so you get the mess, go get thrown out of the mess. <laughs> go get kicked out. Ask for, ask for six eggs for breakfast. <laughs> no, like 12, go get thrown out. And it's like, yeah. And you're, it's like, I want, I want the mess staff to be angry with me because you guys are just sitting there like abusing them, you know, for breakfast. And then you come back mm -hmm. and abuse them again at lunch. Then you spend like two hours in there at dinner time, just shoveling food into your face. Mm -hmm. And I want you putting on, I want all you guys putting on at least two to three pounds a week. Mm -hmm. So, you've, well, like, so you, you've, you've got these, all these yeah. kids and the, and by the end of six weeks, they're all quite a bit bigger and stronger, right? Well, I mean, like you're, you're designing the soldier that you essentially want, right? If you're going to hit the battlefield, right? What do you want? You want a strong imposing, like, soldier right so yeah you take that kid and so what happened to me i joined at 19 
I was skinny, man. I'm six four, but I was 170 when I joined. So I was I'd never lifted any. Well, that's not true. I I was I, I was going to the gym with my dad, so I had a base of like what to do. But like I was I wasn't I didn't know how to do hypertrophy training, and I wasn't eating. Like let's be honest, I was <laughs> eating maybe like 1500 calories a day. Like I'd crush a big meal at the end of the day because I wouldn't eat breakfast. I'd eat a little lunch, and then so when I got to the military, this three square a day and like the constant exercise. I gained 30 pounds. So I actually hit 200, which most guys, yeah. a lot of guys lost weight, but it's just because I was eating all the time. And then on leave, I go to the gym because everybody else was going to the gym. I was like, okay. So just mm -hmm. that alone gained a lot of weight. It's interesting. They didn't take from what I hear, from what I understand, they didn't measure, uh, ob like, uh, objective measures in terms of like body weight or, or anything like that. They just measured the, um, injury prevalence. Mm -hmm. So, um, one of the interesting things you're talking about, you know, like don't run like no, no rock marches. Like let's just focus all of our effort on the lifting side of things. They'll get yeah. better at the running and the rock marching just by virtue of doing that. And they're going to be on their feet doing all kinds of like non-exercise activity. Anyways, they'll get better. Um, in the, in the notes here on the training notes, it says training stakeholders. So that's like company commanders, commanding officers, everything like that. So training stakeholders expressed a reluctance to accept the recommendation for running in ability groups, citing their concern that candidates would purposely avoid challenging themselves and query their DP1 instructor's ability to supervise the recommended externally loaded functional exercises. So I thought that like, was interesting, man. Yeah, like, it's, that, um, that, that, I, that I get. I'm like, I, I know that mentality. It's like, you're going to, you're going to like fuck the dog troop if you have the chance to like go into like the slow platoon. So it's and like, you have any idea right? how easy it is to convince a late teenage kid? It's like, I want you to get big and strong. That's your yeah. job for the next couple of weeks. You know why? You know why the troops don't like doing the runs and whatever? Because they know it doesn't work. They know it's a waste of their time. They know. They're smarter than their CEOs think. Their CEOs are conflating activity with productiveness. They just want to see activity. They want to see a result. It's or not. I mean, they, they, they like getting the result because it makes them look good. But like they don't want to see a a thought through process that challenges how they think a result result should come about. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear it. So it's like, okay, well, it's, so that's why I'm trying to attack this like at the master corporal to captain level. Cause it's like, you'll just never get through to a CO. It's, it's just give up. Just ignore them. They're, they're not worth the time unless they're sufficiently like, you know, wise enough to know it's like, well, maybe the thing that I've been doing for 20 years that is producing problems is a problem. <laughs> or, or, you know. introspection you mean <laughs> yeah and it's, it's just like it's 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 like it's it's so it, I, I can explain this stuff it makes sense to you right mm. I, I explain this to a, like a major and above and they they can't comprehend it it doesn't compute it's you like think hey, it's because they don't have a they don't have a background in like fitness and health or is it just it's it's something else it's i don't know it's like a logic block you know <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, sir. Well, I'll try and explain it this way. It's like, um, it's snowed, right? And you need to shovel the driveway. So we have two methods of doing this. In method one, I will take the shovel and move the snow out of the driveway. In method two, I will take the shovel, put more snow into the driveway, and then shovel the driveway out. Now, which method is the superior method of cleaning the driveway? It's just stuff. It's like, I, I don't know how to make this more simple for, for them. Like I, 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 I I've, I've, ex, I've, 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 the article's there. It's up. I'm a veteran now. Yeah. I can be a rude, you know, jerk as much as I want to now because I'm free. I can tell them that they're stupid and there's no comeback to that because I've explained my position as clearly as possible. And, uh, if I've, I've yet to hear a counter argument like an actual mm -hmm. argument other than some vague appeal to authorities. Like, well, the Marines do it. It's like, well, are, are they wrong? You know, yeah. it's like, look, I, I know I'm a jerk sometimes and that that's fine. Um, if, if you have, if someone has a better argument than the argument that's, uh, that I've articulated in this, I want to hear it so I can refine my argument and be better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if something, if something better comes up, I'll just change my mind. So, 
to put some like quantitative data to this program that they did. Yep. They um, obviously were trying to reduce injuries, right? And so mm -hmm. anecdotally, this past year, I I heard through you know my friends that are at brigade and stuff like that. Here in our brigade, they lost almost 50% of their DP one infantry candidates due to soft tissue injuries and just being, uh, RTU. Yeah. That's insane because there's like, they're having a hard enough time getting people in mm -hmm. and then they show up and then they get broken and yeah. it's because it's, it's status quo, right? It's, it's, uh, it's more ironic. If, yeah, if it was it, a business venture, they'd be out of business by now. Would you be, you'd be, yeah. You, and everybody no. would have got fired. It's been like, how did well, you, how did you let that happen? You know what I mean? Here's, here's another fun one. Is it in violation of the, uh, commander's safety policy to do what? Well, to, uh, conduct training events that are in fact known to produce large numbers of these repetitive strain injuries. Is this a, mm. cause I know the, uh, the, the commander, the brigade commander, whoever he publishes a safety policy annually or something, right? It's just it's one of those yearly things thing, yeah. signs off. It's like, yes, we want to reduce this and blah, 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 you know, have good, whatever. It's like, well, okay. Are you actually following that? Are you just being the uh, brigade commander's orders by uh, one going to ruck march? That's going to break a third of the troop, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Cause I think we're competing against other, but I, I mean, it is clear that the, the, this younger generation just doesn't have as much robustness, especially in their soft tissue, because they aren't as active. So no. they're dealing with that. Mm -hmm. But just because that's a thing doesn't mean that you can't adapt. Because just just because you had a model that's been working okay, like, and when I say okay, I mean, DP one candidates, you shouldn't have a 50% failure rate. Like, I think I lost like, four or five guys on mine, like, and that that's pretty standard. When I was an instructor, we didn't lose like half a freaking course. That's insane. You're supposed to get them through. Like you're supposed to be good <laughs> soldiers. Um, and usually by the time they hit the, especially like the DP one infantry, if they couldn't hack it, they BMQ kind of washed them out. So as we all know, so <laughs> essentially when they get there, it's like, they just need to learn how to be a soldier, be an infantry soldier. And that's that, but they're, they're not even getting through like the, the, the entire course. And we all know, especially in the reserves, if, if they get sent home, they're basically not going back again. It's not, it's not going to happen. And this is totally 100% preventable with a dedicated strength program. And the results yeah. that they're showing, this is like, this is a course they did in Meaford. Mm -hmm. So DP one infantry, I'll just share it here on the, on the screen. Um, it wasn't a huge cohort, but it was big enough. I think this is the one here. Is this the one in Meaford? Yeah. So this is it. Um, so they had, uh, 131 troops go through their program total musculoskeletal injuries uh 56 out of the 131 so that's 43 percent had and so folks if you're not clear like musculoskeletal injuries um that could be shin splints uh ankle roll like it's mostly shin splints let's be honest it's mostly shin splints yeah. sore feet um you know like ankles uh, so and mostly lower body and then uh, overuse MSKI, again, that's, you know, that that's like plantar fasciitis, shin splints, 16 out of the 131. So that's 12%. So um, if we look and pop over to the actual numbers that weren't going through this pr uh, program, so you have 188 <clears throat> troops go through, there's typically 61% of them have MSKIs compared to the 43 that went through this uh, program. And 34% have overuse MSKI and only 12% had in the, the, the program. So total, at the end of the day, they saw a massive decrease in attrition's because they had only 5%. So six of their troops were sent home that were following this GRIT study mm -hmm. um, or GRIT program. And then um, the control, 15% went home. Um, so on a absolute basis, that was 22 fewer attrition's, um, for the grit study, although the cohorts weren't exactly the same size. So it's better to judge by percentage points, but on an army basis, like on a large, like large scale organizations, that's a massive, massive change because 
that means you have like 10% more candidates coming through per year that would have been punted out. And this is the reg force. Reg force, you get a chance to like go to the gym and train when you're in pat platoon in the, in the reserves. You don't get that. You don't get any support. Like you don't have like a program. You don't have anybody watching. You just show up. So um, this is big. This is big. So uh, James, like, what do you think? What do you think about that in terms of uh, injury prevention? Well, as a uh, as as a former military, but now taxpayer person, I'm uh, I'm quite happy to see that number go down. This is <laughs> yeah, uh, this is here. an expensive breaking personnel is an expensive habit. You just like just 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 take a moment to ponder the the cash savings for the the crown that that just tweaking the program has produced. It's mm-hmm. A lot of money. Yeah, that's literally one. That's what four CDTC. So that's Meford, right? Um, yeah. So. You know, and then every summer, it, there's courses all over Canada, right? And so you're getting guys that are, and gals are getting punted out on every trade because they're getting musculoskeletal injuries. So if you could have across the board a savings of, let's say, 10%, that's a lot of human beings, man. And mm-hmm. that's a lot of money. So this is like a no-brainer, in my opinion, that yeah. you just carry on with this. One, one thing that they were uh, – that's not actually – I didn't see it in the study. I've read it, but when I was at the conference, uh, they were using uh, a uh, absolute strength metric as a means to determine the chances of injury. I don't have that slide, unfortunately. And mm-hmm. they were using the uh, deadlift, but not. Uh, so I, I don't quite know how to describe. Well, how to call it, but it's, it's the a um, static plate deadlift, right? Yeah. So you have the force plate underneath your feet. With ice, and yeah, then, it's like, I don't understand yeah, that. Why make it so complicated? It's they wanted it. So it's, it's like, just, you know how you can tell how strong someone is at a deadlift. You just have them do a deadlift. You, you um, have them do a deadlift and you keep increasing the weight till they can't do it. And I, the previous number why. is the one that, yeah, it's, I think the it's reason why they simple. just, they, they wanted to have it so standardized that there wouldn't be any technical skill <clears throat> impediment. So I think that's the reason yeah, why. Yeah, but here's the issue in that they – I actually saw them doing this in Borden, and um, they kind of ruined their um, study by over overcooking it. So here's the issue. Um, so when they, they pull the bar and it goes up and it hits the um, – they had a set of safety, safety pins there. Yes. And yes. It's, it, the bar stops, right? How much effort are you going to put into pulling something that you know for a fact will not move? Mm. How hard yeah, are you going to try? So they were not actually testing the absolute strength of these students. They were testing how hard they would pull against something that they knew was not going to move. If I tell you to go pick up your car, am I going to get a maximum effort out of you? No, you're going to go. Oh. You're going to go. So yeah, yeah, I tried. I'm just going to pick it up. You know? That's and, just um, not going to move, man. It's, 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 you know, for, <laughs> you know, this is not going to move. It's like I, I, I so you can't have these kids or these you know young soldiers who are like looking at this bar. It's like I can't transmutate this bar through that piece of steel. So I'm going to like eh, pull on it and stuff. And you're like, oh, you know, they, they tried hard and all that stuff. But um, it's like, that is not a max effort. Whereas if, if I had a max, if I had a, wanted to test your max effort, I'd have a number that I, I already knew you could do. It's like, well, okay, let's add 20 pounds to that. You know? Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Um, so it's like, it's yeah. by, by over-sciencing this, it's, it's bad data. Right, because the right. test in and of itself has its the, flaws. The, the test discourages a maximum effort. You're also not going to get a maximum effort pull out of someone who just learned how to deadlift because they can't produce a maximum effort pull. Right, they don't. They, 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 they have made. They had made the connection. They, they don't yet, know right? how to do it. They they literally yeah. can't. So there's 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 no point in trying to test a max effort on someone who just learned how to pull a heavy deadlift. It's it's junk. So then. It's, it's junked out. Yeah. It's, it's not good. So you're yeah. just getting a general thing. Is like I bet the people who were generally bigger got generally better numbers at that. Mm, that well, yeah, be, I can't say yes or no, <laughs> but I mean, probably just probably it. Probably, I yeah. mean, um, I, I know there was some pushback in, in the comments uh, with people that were in the in the room because they were like, "Well, why is it absolute strength?" Because ones if people are you know ones if there's women there and stuff and i I like the response from the researchers they're like well because in the infantry it is absolute strength like you either can lift this heavy machine gun 50 cal or you can't 
you either can lift something up onto a truck or you can't. It doesn't matter if you're big or small. You just have to have the absolute strength. So I like that concept. But well, and um, also, if I, I, I like wanna, what you talk- sorry, can I just like interject a bit there? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so it, for the women, it the absolute strength matters more. Mm-hmm. Because I, I, I'd they, have to agree. they have to train it more in order to keep up. Mm-hmm. They they need this. If in order to, I understand it's like, you know, equality and whatnot, but if you're going to be responsibly uh, putting women into these combat arms positions, you, I guess you as like the leadership people are responsible for making sure that they're properly trained. And part of that proper training is getting them a lot stronger so that they don't get broken, so they can do the job, so they can perform, so they can be successful and not get injured all the time and, you know, have good careers. I totally agree, man. It's like arguing in favor is, uh, you know, like rational and pretty aggressive strength training for troops is a very pro Roman pro uh, woman position. Mm -hmm. Well, I know it's going to give them what they need to hang. Yeah. That's one thing I notice because I have the Athena program. And Mm -hmm. so we have cohorts of um, veteran women come through and a lot of them have a lot of injuries, man. And it's like, it's because it's because like they're, they, they get like, yeah, okay, well you're in the job now. And it's been a job that's kind of calibrated for men from the 1960s. Well, yeah, you write about that in your article, right? Yeah. Like, it's, all the equipment and gear is made for dudes that can lift things. So yeah. you need to be able – they're not going to change the gear. No. So you're going to have to rise up. And that's one thing that well, I wish – You can change the fit and stuff a bit, but it's like the the physics demand that the Carl G be an 84 millimeter. That's the physics. The, you, you can't have like a women's edition of a Carl G. It doesn't – it's not going to fly. <laughs> It's not, it's not going to punch through a armor. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you know, drop that. It's like, okay, it's, um, this is a case of, you know, some like modern inclusion politics is like smashing face first into a bit of reality here. It's like, well, okay, it's, we gotta, you, you, you can't change the job because then the job stops getting done. But mm-hmm. it's like, well, we can still adjust the training plan to be more accommodating and to produce the, result that's important and to do something that makes sense follow the logic discard some of the old ways of doing things because it's not the 1970s anymore and also like the the base 18 year old male from 1970 is very different from the base 18 year old male 2023 they're they're different animals Mm -hmm. The, the 23 year old male is probably a bit better educated and probably a bit better behaved too, mm-hmm. but also probably considerably less tough. Yep, hundred percent. So hundred percent. But it's like, well, luckily we have this magnificent device called a barbell. You can put progressively heavier things onto it, and you can use that piece of steel and iron to induce a growth spurt and just hand wave away these problems. So it's like I'm sure they're going to catch up to me, <laughs> like another six years or so in the grit program when they figure out it's like well actually no if we just and they're going to run another study it's like we actually just dropped the entire cardio and all the ruck marching and the injury rate went down to like almost zero, zero so actually, actually story time i was in uh i was a course officer for a while at the div training center so it was like mm-hmm. doing stuff like plq ajlc and also just like reserve stuff so like you know truck driver stuff so we still do pt with the with the troops um how many uh, troops do you think I ever sent to the MIR during the courses? Mm, Just visits. I, I'm going. I'm going to say zero. Uh, two. So uh, okay. <laughs> one. One. She fell down a flight of stairs during an FTX, yep. and another guy. He had some like NDA rifle, like right beside his eye, and he caught a piece of carbon in his eye. That, that was my two things. So it's actually you can, if they get really ruthless with finally like getting rid of that stupid ruck march and this fixation on ruck march, you can zeroize injury rate. It can be done. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I mean, you'll still get some like random strained, you know, sprained ankles and stuff from walking in the woods and trips and get falls. sticks in the eye. Like these are yeah, it's but, a dangerous job, right? This is, 
this is preventable and it's, it's actually preventable by doing less work. Yeah. It's going to break, it's going to break a lot of commanders minds, man. It's going to break a lot of commanders. Well, it's because like there's a bit of survivor bias with the commanders because they all survived to get to that point. They didn't get broken. Well, I had to fucking do it. Yes. Well you did, but (laughs) I'm not training you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get private snuffy qualified. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so it's like, well, you obviously found out what works for you. And also it's like, I presume that you did a lot of your own work, sir, right? You took initiative and didn't, you didn't get in good shape by just doing group PT. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, we all know that group PT does not work. It never, it never works. It doesn't do anything. It, it just like, it, it, impo- it, it adds stress onto the stress pile of what the troops are already doing. So mm-hmm. it was actually with uh, some of the reservist people I was training because I know that they'd be going back to their homes and whatever after they'd done a course. It's like, well, I just, um, I, I just instead of like actually going for like PT and like exercising, getting all sweaty and stuff, I just like said, okay, we're just going to work on how to do a deadlift. That's it. How to do a squat, how to do a bench press, how to overhead press, and they liked it. Because mm-hmm. like, yeah. okay, I, I've, I've learned something I can take back home with me. Right. And you can get a better movement pattern that you can apply for the rest of your life so that the chances of you lifting something or moving incorrectly and getting injured goes way down. Right. Just like these, these fundamental movement patterns, man, especially for the younger generation too, if they're not athletic, um, they're, they're missing, they're missing their hip hinge. They're just missing like just proper, like mechanics, especially on a run and stuff like that. So like, there's a big learning curve now for if you're bringing in new troops, Mm -hmm. but they can, they can learn, man. Of course they can learn. It's just, yeah. you need to write the set up the right conditions so that they can actually get there. Um, and I well, like where this is all, I like where this is all going. Like, I hope it, I hope it starts taking shape because they kind of have no choice but to, because they're desperate, right? Like there's nobody joining and they're losing people like crazy. The people yeah. that they get in, you better freaking keep them in and, and like bring that injury rate down to zero, but not by making the, the actual course easier don't bring down the standards get them stronger like just get them stronger like even here it's like their their strength program is two to three times a week it's a three by eight to 12 reps at a regular tempo two one two rest two minutes at like 84 percent of max heart rate like it's not anything wild it's not a ton of volume but for somebody who's never trained before this is going to suck but in a good way right like they're going to build a ton yeah. Like you said, you get, you get, if you get those 18 year old guys, because most infantry courses, I think it's still 98% dudes, yeah, right? It's, you know, like, I think there was two women in their, in their cohort. It's, it's like the, the, the job attracts a certain personality. It doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter if you say we want people with pe- purple hair and like five different identities. They're still not, well, yeah, those people are still not going to join. It doesn't matter no, what you like, say because the job just, sucks balls. <laughs> it's, it's like, <laughs> it's like, all right. So you've, you've calibrated the recruiting strategy to attract the people with like purple hair and five different identities who are never in a million years. <laughs> never want anything to join. To do with you. Like, it's, wait, I got to dig a hole and sit in there. Why? Well, it's like enemies you're gonna, gonna come. you're gonna convince the the frailest people in the world to suffer for okay <laughs> the pay. most individualistic people that have no concept of wanting to be part of a team it makes no also, sense but we want to um repulse the uh the conservative minded and patriotic people we don't want them around it's like well, yeah but wow, if anything it's, it's probably the it's probably the best time to join because it's kind of like blue ocean right uh yeah. it, it, whenever you're in a rebuild like if you're 18 and you join now and then all of a sudden it's like hey yeah go go work out like we're going to work out over nine weeks we're going to get you strong go to the and, and that's the other thing too like there's not addressed but you talked about it go to the mess get kicked out if the mess doesn't accommodate for this new mentality too because why am i limited to two eggs why can't i get four? Oh, well why can't i get six why can't i get more i mean it's it's a volonté it's like are you just going to run out of eggs come on man i see how much food we throw out yeah, so it's, it's like they scramble they've, up, scramble they've, they've up. You know, like if it's portion time. idea, it's like, well, no, it's um, right. when you're when you're working twenty hours a day. It's like you're, the caloric needs they go up a fair bit, especially if you're like trying to engineer a growth spurt. An eighteen year old is like, I, I was at I was at the gym the other day. I've been like, you know, chatting with his like, I think he's like seventeen, eighteen year old guy. It's like, well, I want you to go to the store every day and get a jar of peanut butter, 
and I want you to eat the jar of peanut butter <laughs> every day. <laughs> he, he's like six two and like one thirty. It's like oh, okay. He's like, <laughs> I, I tried to teach him how to squat, and he couldn't keep the bar on his back because he didn't have. He's like, I can see his like skeleton, man. It's not good. It's like it's collapsing. Like, it's just like, your, your your job is to, to gain two pounds a week. And he's doing better because like he came up with a strategy where it's like, all right, you're gonna take that peanut butter jar and like convert it into three sandwiches, peanut butter jam sandwiches. You have one in between breakfast and lunch, one between lunch and dinner, and like one is a bedtime snack. No. Just keep doing that. It's like he came back. It's like, yeah, I'm two pounds heavy. So like, right on, man. So like, keep going. Yeah, man. It's like the go. Was it Go Mad? Where you a gallon of milk a day? Right. That I'm old actually, school way uh, of. I'm I'm doing a variant of that right now because like I'm older, so I, I I can't do Go Mad without getting fat. But I'm drinking a half yeah. gallon of milk a day, like just full wow. fat milk, and it works. Yeah, well, yeah, no kidding. The caloric intake on that is must be insane. Yeah, it's like a, so, it's like about sixteen hundred calories or so extra. 16, days yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I gotta stay. Well, I gotta stay away from that, man. I get, I get fucking bitch titties for sure, man. I gotta. No, nah, well, it's, <laughs> no. It's, it's, so the, the issue is you have to pair the go mad with like I'm gonna throw five pounds at every single lift every time I walk in the gym. Nice. That's 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 it. And it's like, well, if you get your bench press up to three hundred pounds, I've yet to meet a three hundred pound bencher with look like titties you know mm. yeah yeah you're, you're, you're not gonna it's a if, requisite if, amount of muscle mass that needs to be on that frame yeah if if, if like if, if if you do the go mad thing and if you are deadlifting 500 pounds it's like people are not gonna make fun of you because you'll <laughs> look a bit scary <laughs> you know? uh, um one last thing i just wanted to touch on one of your yep. articles you talked about the um the novice linear progression model i wanted mm -hmm. to learn a little bit more about that because i think that relates to what we're talking <clears throat> about here um especially with troops that are just coming into you know military and if all of a sudden now they're like okay well now we got to start lifting and stuff too um, how does that relate to what we're talking about here and what, it, what is that exactly? All right. So the novice uh, linear progression is a strength training program. It's for a person who's new or has not uh, done a strength dedicated and focused strength training program before it will be the fastest possible way for that person to add strength. So what is essentially, there are two workouts. There's the a workout, which is uh, three sets of five squats. Uh, three sets of five overhead press and one set of five deadlift. There's the B workout, which is three sets of five squats, uh, three sets of five bench press and one set of five deadlift. And what you do is there's more phases after this, but you just add five pounds on your lifts every time you come in. For the deadlift, you can add like a, you know, a, do a 20 pound jump and then like a, maybe a couple of 10 pound jumps and you're doing five pound jumps. For the squats, you can do like maybe one 10 pound jump and just like do five pound jumps for months on end and just keep jacking the number up. And as long as you're like eating enough and you're sleeping enough and pay attention to that stuff, you, you can add a surprising amount of weight to your lifts. That's that novice program is how I got robbed to do uh, that four and five for a set of five deadlift. That that's how he got there. Just five pounds at a time and five pounds heavier every time he deadlifted. Mm -hmm. And he was, was he, do, is it one, day of five by five or is it two days so no three five days? by five so so five, for for an old like for for a younger guy like five sets of five can work okay yeah um because a younger guy can put up with an abuse yeah uh, for okay. an older guy like even myself i've i've stopped doing five by five squats uh for a little bit because it's just beating me up too much mm -hmm. so for older guys you don't want to do the five by five necessarily especially if it's getting heavier um Anyway, yeah, we're, we're sidetracked, but yeah, it's like, it's just like, um, the point is to add weight every time you come in. Oh, okay. He's like, that's, you just, you just focus on that. So it's like that, that's why with this grit thing is like, I'm not sure they're doing strength training, like real strength training, like mm, really, really, really focused in on that. Cause I know it's like, yes, we're going, we're doing like, you know, the eight to 12 reps and resting two minutes like well no if, if you were doing strength training you're not resting two minutes you're like having a panic attack in a corner and you're resting for seven minutes in between your sets of squats because <laughs> you're scared because <laughs> you, you you felt like you were gonna die on monday and you, you finished it and you felt like you're gonna die and now it's mm -hmm. wednesday and it's five pounds heavier again and you're you're scared so mm -hmm. if it doesn't get to the point where the weight is frightening 
No, it's there's no mention of overload or anything. Are they mentioning? There's overload? no mention of progressive. There's no. Uh, oh wait, hold on a sec. Prioritize lower extremities, emphasize precision of movement, and progressively increase demands. Okay, what does that Plan mean? Does that mean get heavier? I, I'm does guessing that that's like their 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 sciency way of saying like put weight on the bar. Um, okay, it was like, but that's because if the point of a strength program is to increase strength, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, how can you tell if you're getting stronger if you're not putting a bunch of weight on the bar? Because yeah. if it's like, if, if I was to grab a cohort of these troops and say like, yeah, I got them in the week one, they're doing this. Uh, week six, um, their deadlift is up 130 pounds on average. So they got stronger. Um, yeah. W without using the, the fancy wording, I'd, I I would have a horrible time in an exercise science program because I just talk simple and stuff. You know, yeah, um, it, all they're doing, yeah, all they're doing is is saying it gets harder, but there's no, it doesn't seem to be, there doesn't seem to be any real like standardized progression model, like okay. you're talking about, where it's just like every time you go in, you put five pounds. <clears throat> yeah, like every time you come in, you have to add weight. It's like it's, you just get into that mentality because it's like if you're adding weight, that means you're getting stronger. It means you're getting a result. Yeah. And if you're not adding weight, you're not getting stronger and you're not getting a result. So it's not a strength training program. It's strength training, looking, exercising. You're just doing the huh. stuff and even going out and doing stuff results in what that's, that's, that looks like a strength training program results in a, that 60 something percent reduction. Right. Right. Which, so if you were to do a true strength training program, you could probably mm -hmm. get even better results. Yeah. It's, I mean, why not? But the issue is they, they probably don't know how to do it. Mm. Cause it's like, it, it sounds simple as like, just add five pounds and you go after it. Right. But it's like, well, the, the, the test of like, do you know what you're doing with like programming execution is like, does that add five pounds die after two weeks or can you keep it going for three months? Yeah. And in, you know? like when you have a, when you have a young dude <laughs> or gal in the gym, right. And they yep. don't quite know, like you can put them under a bar and be like, all right, I want you to do like eight reps of this. And I want you to go to like, a, like to like RPE, like nine, like I want you to go hard. Like I want it to suck. Mm -hmm. And then they rest 45 seconds. They're like, yeah, that was super hard. And then they're able to go back in and do like another set. Like they just don't know, like they, they, they haven't calibrated what hard is yet. How do you, yeah, how so do you. It's how do you adjust well, that, for that? Because it's like so adding it's, five pounds, like they can clearly do like 50 more, but they're like, no, this is really hard, but it's not really. Cause you just went rest at 30 seconds and you got right back in there. So clearly this is yeah, so quite it's, hard. Uh, someone who's that new, it's they, they can't comprehend. They don't, they don't know what hard is. They, they yeah. don't, they don't have the experience. And the other thing is when you are under the load, you can't quant, call, like figure out what hard is either. Cause you're under a lot of stress, especially if it's, you've gotten a lot stronger, it's gotten heavy. Cause like I did my, my last heavy squat, I had 545 pounds for a triple and I was very afraid getting into it. And, um, I was also kind of afraid of the third repetition. I didn't think I was going to get it mm. because I felt like I was going to die under the bar and you just come back and like you, you spend a moment kind of collecting yourself and you check the video and you'll see that even though you felt really bad, the speed at which the bar moved did not change across the three reps. Yeah. So yeah. you cannot, I, I don't, I do I never use RPE. Okay. Cause it's impossible to accurately judge how much you have left in the tank. So it's, it's my job to use my experience to kind of look and tell if someone's really grinding or they're having a hard time and adjust from there. But the lifter does not get yeah, to make the bar speed call. thing. Yeah. And then your perception is like, oh my God, I'm not getting this up. And then you look at the yeah. footage and it's like, it went up pretty good. Yeah, it just went. <laughs> yeah, it went. <laughs> but, so it's like, yeah, it's, it's kind of the opposite of the modern mindset. It's like, no, your feelings do not matter. I, Man, I, 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 I really, I really do not care how someone feels under the bar. It's, it's always going to be bad. Um, you just have to give your parts a twist and, you know, get on with it. <laughs> It's, you just have to, it's, 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 it's like, yes, everything's scary. Everything's hard, but it's only like a little bit worse than last time. So you can manage it. You can yeah. managing fine so far. So it's like, it's cool. kind of like some courage training. Mm -hmm. 
So it's, uh, it's, well, it's, 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 it's exposing these, these younger guys to something that they have not had growing up. So hundred percent, they love it. hundred so percent, like, man. That, that's why they need to be exposed to the progressively heavier and heavier and heavier weights. Cause you know what happens, uh, what's the outcome if you get someone who's like, they've been successfully running up their deadlift and they get to something they just can't do it and they actually like fail it. Mm -hmm. They, the weight just doesn't come off the ground. They just walk away and feel bad for a bit. That, that, that's it. Yeah. It's worst case scenario. Yeah. Well, they'll yeah. be fine. And, yeah. and like, then they'll be more motivated to get back after and be like, man, how do I get, how do I get past it's, this? It's going to like point. stick in their brain. And it's like, I got to come back and do this on Friday, you know? <clears throat> Cause uh, yeah. like if you actually like get your people running a correct program, they actually like doing it. You know, once again, let's kind of loop, loop back to it. The, the troops don't like going on these like, these stupid pointless group workouts and they just don't try and they don't try on the runs because they know for a fact that it's not actually doing anything they know mm -hmm. so and 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 to make matters worse there's no law like let's say they were actually logging and like yeah. seeing how you're progressing on a run that would at least give you some data that mm -hmm. would be like oh yeah my 5k run time got better cool yeah. this this is they are monitoring in this program now, but everybody's separated in their like respective groups and there's interval mm -hmm. training and stuff like that, which that like, if you're going to do it, you better monitor it. You better take things down. Cause then you're just, you're just running for the sake of running. And I hated doing that. Although mm -hmm. I had, I had no issues doing it. Cause I, I always enjoyed running, mm -hmm. but I knew, I knew too. I'm like, this run is like, what's the, what's the point of this other than we're just going for a run. And like the idea, like it's for morale, no, I don't buy that. I don't buy that, man. Like well, if you want to do something like, for morale, it's like, do you, <laughs> do you understand what morale is? <laughs> like, don't go for a run. Cause it's, it's crushing morale right, right now. Like I'm not going for uh, like a morale run. No way, man. Um, I'd rather play like ball hockey, but that's like injury, like city one on one. That's like the main reason for injuries in like calf deployments is like ball hockey from a report that I read a few years ago. Yeah. But, it's um, stupid. I mean, I, it, but it is what it is, right? You're going to play sports because we have a dangerous job and it's just part of, it's part of what, but if you were properly trained, if you had a ton of strength training, the odds of you being injured during ball hockey would probably go down significantly too. And it would just make everybody a little bit more robust from like the clerk all the way down to like the grunt in the trench. If everybody's strong, you have a much more resilient force that can uh, withstand the, the demands of, of their job. And like for a clerk, man, you're sitting down all day. Well, if you're strong, you're not going to have nearly as many issues. You're probably not going to have a back issue. Maybe your knee will be stronger. You know, like all these things that like people at desk jobs have, if you're strong. Yeah, you're not going to get hurt from typing. You're not going to um, get hurt from typing, man. Simple as that. Um, James, um, so you're, you said at the beginning that um, you have a few COAs on the go. The mm -hmm. one that stood out was the uh, one with starting strength. Um, what's going on with you with that and like, just want to know, like, uh, are people going to be able to follow you? Like where can, I know you're, a, like a solid strength coach. You've been coaching a bunch of the guys in the Facebook group. Um, where can people follow you and where can people watch your journey? Yeah. So it's just like uh, hopping over into the Facebook group. Um, don't be shy to ask a question or ask for a form check. I'll just give it a, I'm like a drug dealer. You know, the first taste is free, <laughs> you know, I'll just give you some like uh, really good feedback and get you kind of hooked after you see some like actual results and uh yeah so just i'll i guess i can like kick you over or maybe you already have the link to that thing so just come over join yeah. up what what's um, it called again just so that people can uh can master for strength it. training master strength training yeah, I'll pull yeah it it's up. just like pull yeah it's just it's it's a pretty basic meat and potatoes like guaranteed results like it's if if i take over your training is like I, I i guarantee results if you do what it says <laughs> but, <it's, laughs> but you have to you have to like you know do what i say <laughs> but you, you that's kind of the, get that's kind of the big caveat uh you kind of got to do what i'm telling you to do yeah it's kind of like driving a car it's like you know it's like if you take the car and crash it into a tree it's like well you you crashed a car into a tree <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that that's, that's like, it. So it's just like a, a just a little group there. You just jump in, join. 
I'll, I'll, I'll look at your stuff. I'll give you good feedback. I'll tell you like, if, if you're stuck, if you can't figure something out, like what's going on mm -hmm. and then, uh, yeah. Awesome. Love okay. it. You're the res, res, resident, uh, strength coach here on the hard to kill podcast. So all things strength, I, uh, I reference James, he knows this stuff inside out and backwards. So buddy, thanks again for, uh, sharing your insights and, um, let's see, man, maybe six years, we'll see a, a radical change in the forces or maybe 20, who knows, but I just, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's going to have to I'm come from going the in the right off. direction. It's going to have to grassroots. Yeah. Master Corporal to Captain. That's it. That's I, I agree. We yeah. got to get more of those Master Corporals in your group um, yeah. and get them disseminated to the rest of the forces. So thanks, man. Thanks for right. uh, for chatting again. And no, thanks, uh, thanks for hosting, Dave. I think it's fantastic, all the work and stuff that you're doing to like advance the health and benefits of the troops and stuff like that. It's, you're, you're doing good work, man. And uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for hosting me. Appreciate that. Well, honestly, like with this study and stuff like that, this is kind of one of the reasons why I got into this because I was mm -hmm. just like so pissed that I – was told I'm not like worth them. Well, I'm not more. It's not that I wasn't worthy. It's just, I was too busted up to be part of the army that I loved. And, yep. um, I realized that it was just a strength and conditioning issue. And I was like, Oh damn it. You know? Yeah, so this, uh, this hopefully will <laughs> save a bunch of other young privates. And then eventually we become sergeants or captains, majors from losing their careers due to something that's preventable through, um, through strength training. So yep. that's up. All right. I'm man. Cool, man. <laughs> Have a good night. All Thanks right. Thanks again. Cheers. You too. All right. Bye. I hate t-shirts that get floppy in the arms after 10 washes. So that's why I created a bunch of t-shirts with high quality cotton just for you so that you can go to the gym and look fresh, sport some philosophy and smash those PRs looking good. So you need to head to davemorrow.net slash merch, grab yourself a hat, grab yourself a t-shirt, grab yourself a sweater and support the cause today.